D here, DRodge 1991, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Snap. Uh, just got to do a quick little couple minute vlog about the recent events in the world. I'm not going to talk about Orlando because it's already been, you know, grossly overstated and talked about. Not that I don't care, but come on. Let's just let them live their lives. Anyway, enough about that. The two animal instance in instances within with the two uh, with the kids in the last few weeks or early part of the month. Okay, this is one thing I gotta say. Yes, I'm in the USA as well, but why? I'm gonna swear here, so pardon me. Anybody that doesn't like swearing? Why the fuck do we not watch our kids? Watch our animals? Watch ourselves? Watch our phones? Or watch whatever we have until something explodes, someone's shot, someone's killed, someone's raped, someone's taken, someone falls into an enclosure, someone gets bit by a snake, someone gets taken by an alligator recently, or somebody falls into a goddamn gorilla enclosure. Are we going to shoot everything when a kid is involved with an animal? Are we going to shoot a dog? Are we going to shoot a cat? Are we going to shoot a snake? An alligator? Are we going to shoot the, you know, zoo people because, you know, didn't catch them before he fell in? Are we going to shoot the foreman on a, you know, a construction site if a kid falls into a pit of, like, you know, materials? Are we going to shoot the foreman? Are we going to shoot the president of that construction company? Where does that stop? Are you going to just kill everything just because the fucking kid's involved? No offense, kids are great. Yes, I'm not saying kill the kids or let them be killed in these incidents, but... God damn it, watch your goddamn kids, USA. Holy shit. Watch your stuff. You've got eyes, you've got a brain, maybe not, but use your senses for the love of God. Just watch your stuff, people. None of this would happen. You wouldn't have to kill this person just because your kids are involved. You wouldn't have to kill this alligator. You wouldn't have to kill the snake. You wouldn't have to kill the cheetah. You wouldn't have to kill the gorilla. If you watch your goddamn kids and your babies. They shouldn't be able to even be able to get that close inside of an enclosure. Oh my god. Watch your kids. Why would you let a kid that's under 10 years old wander around a Disney resort? Or wander around the zoo? Get off your fucking phones and your cameras. Watch your goddamn kids. Or have your husband or your older son or your sister or whoever hold them kids or have them in the stroller strapped in securely while you take video or pictures or you're doing your counseling with the group of kids. But have somebody on hand that can help you with your kid while you're attending to others or you're taking pictures and then you return to your kid. But no, 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 let's not do that. Let's be fucking stupid and try to sue these places because you're negligent and you're a dumbass. USA, you suck. Watch your kids. Watch yourself. Watch your family members. None of this shit would happen. Watch your pets, too. Watch your fucking kids, animals, and whatever. Just, just, none of this would happen. It doesn't have to happen. Nobody has to be killed. Nothing has to be killed. Nothing has to end. Or nothing has to be closed because you're fucking idiot pants out there can't watch your shit. Okay, done with that. That's the kids and the people with animal incidents. Hashtag justice for Harambe. Harambe law. Look it up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Didn't have to happen. Screw that family. I'm sorry. The kid's fine. Yes. It would have been worse if he had died. But it clearly showed he was not aggressive towards the kid. Yes, he dragged him, but he's not dragging him around, smacking him around like some people are trying to make it out to be completely fucking false. Fuck you if you believe he was being aggressive. Anywho, let me put this down. Excuse me. It's, a little, it's in the morning here, so excuse my uh, craziness. Um, I did see last month, was it? Yeah, last month, May, Civil War. I got this sweet cup. I went to the uh, marathon with my friend Anthony from work. You got this cup, you got a sweet lanyard with like the metal. I had Team Cap on one side, Team Iron Man on the other side. I got that for free. You got a free comic book. That was great. Highly recommend it. It's still booming in this um, box office and numbers. See it. Highly recommended. X-Men Apocalypse. I, I personally highly recommend it. I loved it. I like the new take on the characters. Especially Storm Alexandra's ship. 
Um, Michael Fassbender, of course, reprising his role is fantastic as always. And oh, the um, uh, Nat Beast, um, the the blue guy that can teleport. Oh God, the one that can teleport and shit. I like that new take on that character. I can't remember, so leave a comment on this YouTube or tweet me at DRide1991. Anyway, you can go back and forth about the topic. Um, Nightcrawler! There we go, never mind, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Um, he was awesome with the Russian accent and whatever he had, that was great. Uh, I really liked uh, Oscar Isaac as um, Apocalypse. That was awesome. I think this is all my opinion. I know some may differ, but this is me, my thinking. Uh, that so I recommend Civil War, Apocalypse. I want to see Central Intelligence with The Rock and Kevin Hart at some point. Um, the Purge, the third one, in election year or whatever, election day. That one looks awesome. Um, let's see. Warcraft, regardless of the rankings or, you know, estimation so far. It's got my interest because I have a vested, former vested interest in that franchise. I played it for about six months to half a year, quite a number of years ago when I was younger. Got the level 25 on the tour and on the horde side. The, the, I call it the cow thing with badass weaponry. I was one of those, level 25, not even halfway through the game. I just got mad and said, hey, F this. You know, I'm subscribed or whatever I think. Because I, when you're low level under 30 plus... You may get lucky with getting help, but you do not get help because a lot of those assholes are like, oh, you're level 25, I'm not going to help you, noob. Like, it's, like, really? We're all gamers here. Let's help each other out. Fuck the level you're on. Help each other out. It's just a goddamn game with virtual shit you will never touch unless it's a 3D printed, out of convention, or you order it on Amazon. It's a game, you fucks. God, USA, you suck. Okay, anyway, see, I'm a little heated today because all the world is just stupid. We don't care until someone gets shot, there's a bombing, or a tornado, or a hurricane, or a tsunami, or a monsoon, or some other, you know, war-like thing happens, and then we magically care because everybody's getting shot. Oh, then let's talk about people when they're dead and say these things when they are dead or shot or in critical condition. But no, let's not say it every day. Let's just wait until there's a, you know, bombing or a shooting and then tell them how much we care about these people. Magically. Where was that shit every day leading up to these incidents? Where is that same mindset? But no, it's the USA. We're all idiots. Okay, anyway. Um, let's see, uh, I gotta unfortunately talk about some of the recent celebrity deaths. Uh, first it started with me, cause I was a huge Robin Williams fan last year, or the year, within the last two years, Robin Williams, rest in peace, flubber, the professor, or the, you know, the, I don't know, can't remember what role his was, but I believe he was like the creator of flubber, so, rest in peace, Robin Williams, A.K.A. the Flubber guy, A.K.A. Teddy Williams, or Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Williams, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt in the Night Museum movies, all of them, great guy, one of my favorites, I'll never be able to meet him now, unfortunately, so if you out there, anybody that's worked with him, that follows me, or I've interacted with him on Twitter and Instagram, please let the studio know that, you know, he worked with, and his, you know, his group, let know that I care still, and rest in peace, Robin, you will be missed, one of the most funny actors, comedic actors, I think, in my opinion, that I've ever watched and had the pleasure of, you know, interacting, like, with, by watching his, you know, his work, so, Robin Williams, that kicked that off for me, this string of celebrity deaths, and then Christopher Lee, Count Dooku, and, uh, Summer Man. Last year, I want to say. I think I want to say last January, maybe. Within the last year or two. Reverend Williams, Christopher Lee, David Bowie, of course. Rock on, man. Sorry. All this. Sorry all this, to all these people's families, co-workers, friends, fans, and studio people, you know, personnel. Um, it's terrible, and the world has taken some of my favorite in our legends from us, and um, it's really bad. 
Um, let's see. Christopher Lee, Robin Williams, David Bowie, Prince, of course, stay purple. And you don't have to be beautiful to be my girl. Bam, stay purple. Unfortunately, another legend, him, with the last couple of months, I want to say, I'm not sure. So don't call me out because I don't remember. Cause there's just so many, unfortunately, names that have been taken from us. So Prince, um, Muhammad Ali, I want to say, was next. Unfortunately, recently as well. So, rest in peace, champ. I can't remember that quote, but f fight like a something, sting like a bee. So, uh, rest in peace, Muhammad Ali, one of the best ever in any sport. Period. Blank period. Best ever. Um, <laughs> Kimbo Slice, I never really watched any of his matches or his fights, but Kimbo Slice, rest in peace, man, knock him out in heaven. Um, let's see, let's see, Kimbo Slice, uh, Gordy Howe, Mr. Hockey, uh, Detroit Red Wings and NHL legend, unfortunately passed away a few, within a few days ago, um, number 80, or number 9, um, never personally met him, and never got the chance, never, nor will I know, unfortunately passed away at age 88 a few days ago, they had a viewing service at the Joe in Detroit, and uh, it's on inshow.com. Uh, you can probably just Google and YouTube it. Uh, unfortunately, yet another legend to continue the theme of unfortunate events happening with these legends in sports and entertainment. Uh, Gordy Howe, within a few days ago, passed away age 88. And then I believe there's another hockey legend around 80 years old that was also passed away. I don't know the name of that individual yet, but I will look it up. But that's my take on that. Unfortunately, it started with Robert Williams and it ended with Gordie Howe. You see that timeline of suckage? Like, man, like, what is going on? Everybody's like, you know, getting knocked off, unfortunately. And some of these guys were fantastic when they were alive. I've had the pleasure of being a social media follower of some of these people for years before their untimely deaths. So I'm going to continue to follow them and talk about them in videos in the future. And I will probably make some shirt or whatever uh, in remembrance, customink.com on Twitter as well, of like, you know, pictures and quotes for them. And maybe if I'll, you know, grow a bigger pair, get a tattoo with like a saying from a song they have or a quote from a movie. And then, yeah, I have the, their, uh, you know, persona on somewhere on my body, like a saying or their, you know, a face of theirs, something, you know, a tattoo. Um, and then this weekend, Wrestle, not WrestleMania, <laughs> WrestleMania, WWE Money in the Bank contract ladder match, or, or not contract ladder match, but the ladder match to get the opportunity to cash in at any point on a Raw, SmackDown, pay per view within the next year. To challenge Roman Reigns for the or Seth Rollins for the championship WWE World Heavyweight this Sunday at nine or eight thirty. Either way, it's this weekend. Uh, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins for the championship, which is the big one, the Super Bowl basically of WWE. Um, Dean Ambrose, Kevin Owens, a bunch of other guys, Cesaro, Del Rio, and the ladder match for the for the briefcase to cash in to become. Potentially become the next champion. So I'm hoping it's Dean or Cesaro. Because out of the like five or six guys in the ladder match Sunday. I, if anybody would could take it away for a moment. When and, when and if he retains again this time. I would rather it be Cesaro or Dean. Because I really like those guys personally. I followed them on Twitter within the last couple of years, and they're great. Everybody's great on Twitter. Everybody's great. I just don't like when they're wrestling. They weasel the way in and out of matches, and they win in the most shit ways. Seth Rollins. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the thing to get the potential to be the next champion at any point in the next year. That's that. A four-way, four-member Divas tag team. Uh, Becky Lynch and the Talia versus Charlotte and Emma, I want to say. Uh, Sunday, non-championship title match. Just a regular match, but a big one. If Natalia and Becky Lynch 
win versus Charlotte and Nima, that could be a bit of a setback, you know, mentally and standings-wise. Not really any standings, but you know what I mean. That could be a major setback for Charlotte because, oh, he, she finally beat me. What am I going to do with the next pay-per-view or title match? Uh, I really hope whenever the next title for the Women's Championship comes up, I want Becky Lynch, Sasha, or Natalia to get it because Charlotte is a fantastic performer and athlete as well. Everybody is, like I said. I like everybody. I just don't like them in the rest life because they're completely different at conventions. They're outside of their characters. They're like us and me, shooting the shit. But when they're on TV and they're in the wrestling mode, so help us God. <laughs> um, I really, like I said, I want, I, if it came down to it, I want either Becky, Sasha, or Natalia to the Women's Championship. And if Roman would have to lose it, I'd rather beat the Cesaro um, or Dean or Dolph. But I don't want it to be Kevin, I don't want it to be Del Rio, and I don't want it to be Seth. Just because I think he weasels, find ways to weasel his way out of the shit. And he's actually a fantastic guy, but I just, something about him when he's wrestling, I don't like it. It uh, go, gives me the wrong way. Um, like I said, I want Dean, Cesaro, Dolph, take it away from Roman if it came down to them with those three, or those four. If he retains, and um, let's see, I talked about the women's match, I talked about the ladder match, talked about the championship WWE heavyweight match. Um, I think there's a, I think the Intercontinental is up for grabs in the US one. Oh, John Cena, AJ Styles. AJ is phenomenal, but by other sports terms, he's technically still a rookie in the company in WWE because he did come from the. I call it the minor leagues, no disrespect to everybody in NXT, but it basically is the minor leagues, like minor leagues of baseball, minor leagues of the basketball and the D-League. This is the WWE minor league roster. He came from NXT, he's ascended in the WWE to one of the most liked guys now, but he's still, by sports terms, rookie. He's talented, yes. He can do it, yes. But John Cena coming back, my opinion, another legend, John Cena. He's won the U.S. title. He's, I think he's won the WWE overall overall title. I think a, a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken. The Intercontinental, the U.S. and this and this and that. He's done it. He knows what to be done. Has to be done. I'm gonna take John Cena to defeat and submit AJ Styles. Maybe a couple of AAs. Um, that's that big match. I'm not sure about what else. I'm think, I think Rusev has one, but I'm not sure about Anyway, this Sunday on WWE Network, at WWE Network, on Twitter, um, Money in the Bank. We will see if Natalia and Becky Lynch can pull off the win versus Charlotte and Emma. We will see if Seth Rollins retains what I guess is his versus Roman Reigns, the t- title fight or match. Um, the latter match with Dean Ambrose, Cesaro, the Rio, Kevin Owens, and a couple other guys. And we will see if the IC title changes hands. We'll see if the US title changes hands. We will see. We just, we'll see what happens. Follow everybody on Twitter. Follow Becky. Follow Charlotte. Follow me. Follow everybody. They're all on Twitter. They're all on Instagram and Snapchat. Just look for them and Google them and add them and follow them. They're all online. Fantastic people. And just another thing about WWE, wow, WWE, I had the pleasure of meeting Paige, one of my favorites, last year at Florida Supercon, and Daniel Bryan, a living legend, recently retired in the last, what, four or five months? Early this year, late last year, he retired due to injury, whatever, constant injury. So uh, he's with Brie, uh, Brie Bella of the Bella Twins. Fantastic. I mean, those, like, family get-togethers must be, like, fantastically awesome. You got the Bellas, you got the Usos, you got the Cenas, you got this, you got... I want to be at those cookouts, man. So, John, if you ever see this, invite me, man. Get, I... Man, just come on. Have a brother out here. But, you got that. I met him last year. I got a picture. It's on my Twitter and Facebook. Dylan Rogers, DRoger, 1991. Follow me, add me, whatever, blah, 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 and do that. Uh, I met Paige, I met him, I met um, 
I had shook hands with Farouk last year, but I didn't get his picture. $35. I saw John Bradshaw Lakefield, JBL, who blocked me on Twitter at the time last year. Screw you, sorry. Uh, but you know you did something wrong or right when somebody like that blocks you. <laughs> As my uh, friend says from work. Um, this is going on a little bit long, but there's a lot of stuff to cram into a, a video. Without any editing, this is straight from my camera phone, like video recording, and then up to the social media. So, forgive me, I don't have a studio, I don't have a mic, I don't have editing software. I do, but I don't edit it. I shoot it directly from the phone's video capture software, and I upload it. So, yeah, this is all pretty much live. Um... Let's see, what else, what else? I think that's about it. Oh, in gaming, I recently, within the last week or so, finished The Wolf Among Us. Holy shit, that game is awesome. I really hope Season 2 comes out soon, because I will buy that in a heartbeat. That game is badass. A lot better, in my opinion, than The Walking Dead. Walking Dead is awesome, too, but I've had more fun with this. Because you can you can investigate shit. Oh, blood stain on the wall. You must have did it. Oh, there's a marking on the wall. Or this guy, or Toad, or Snow, or this. It's great. It's the adult, kind of modern version, New York City's version of the Fables. You got the wolf from the woodsland. You got the woodsman. You got Snow White. You got this. You got the Toad. You got Toad Jr. You got this. You got Grendel. You got Lily. You got all this. You got all these characters personified as like demon-like things in the modern, modern kind of setting. Highly recommend it. It was free at one point on Xbox Live for gold members. Uh, you could probably find it for like $15 or cheap because, you know, it's episodic games. They're not full price games. Although they're AAA games, yes, but they're not like a $30, $40, like, typical price game. But that, I recommend The Wolf Among Us, The Walking Dead. I really want to get into Tales from Borderlands and the Game of Thrones one. And fresh out of E3 from, I think it was Sony and Microsoft, but... Telltale Games is working on and will be releasing a Batman Telltale game like series. What? Take my take my money. Sony and PlayStation and Microsoft. I don't have a PlayStation, so Microsoft, take my money. Batman Telltale. Holy shit. I can that can only be awesome. So that you got the Batman in the future coming out. You got Tales from Borderlands, Wolf Among Us, Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Telltale Games. Wow. And Xbox One S, new Xbox One uh, controller with, uh, you know, padded grips on the back. That looks awesome. I might get one when it comes out in August, I believe. Um, FIFA. FIFA is awesome. Um, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see what else. I'm playing that. I finished Wolf Among Us. Finished Walking Dead a while ago. I finished the Walk Rise of the Tomb Raider. That was fantastic as well. That's another good franchise right there. Tomb Raider. Uh, I'm still not done with Metal Gear. I'm stuck on a point. I'm stuck in the very last level of the Deadpool movie. Or Deadpool movie. Deadpool game. Um, I'm still playing Madden. So add me on Xbox. Uh, SGT. C L U N K Sergeant Plunk Sergeant Abbreviated S G T C L U N K Add me in Xbox Live. Um Yeah, pretty much other than that, I'm going to Supercon in a few weeks with my friend Anthony from work. We're gonna see Tara Strong, uh Dana Snyder, John Schnapp, Guy Hutchison, Trina Nishimura, uh Henry Winkler, um The Godfather, Chris Wright, Charles Wright, um Mick Foley, I'm still questioning about. Um, Natalia Tina, Stefan Kapicic, Marina Baccarin, Brianna Hildebrand, uh, Steve Blum, Guy Hutchison, uh, Janiel Otrapci, uh, Sean Crystal, Deadpool comic creator and writer, uh, Fabian Nicheza as well. So a bunch of people, cosplayers, Kiki Canyon, Varen, Leaping Lizard, Azuland, a uh, bunch of, you know, all these internet people, Handsome Jordan, it's going to be a fantastic time, so look for me, I'm either going to be one, for some of the days I'm going to be a Deadpool, and then some of the days I'm going to be Joker, Jared Leto style, so look for me, DRudge1991, shout out to all my friends on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, 
I will see you in a few weeks, my man. My dudes, my mans, my peeps, my ladies. Let's get it. Supercon style. VIP again, four days. Full VIP. You get the lanyard, you get the gift bag, you get the night uh, VIP night party cocktail entrance admission. Friday night in one of the ballrooms. So look for me at Supercon in about two and a half weeks. Because this week's almost over. And next week's kind of weird because it's the end of the month of June. July 1st to the 4th. Miami Beach, Miami Beach Convention Center, brought to you by Mike Broder and company, and this and that, city of Miami Beach, South Florida, look for me, we're going to be cosplaying, dancing, and drinking, and eating, and meeting celebrities, and cosplayers, and artists, and voice artists, the whole shebang, floridasupercon.com. Once again, this is D. Rogers, Dylan, South Florida, let's get it.